No, this electric bike is not issued by the military, but it does have a very military looking appearance. Man, we're cooking now, dude, 32.7. They say it can go 32 miles an hour and we can get up to 50 miles on a single charge. The Run Deer Attack 10 is a full suspension electric bike with a little bit higher ground clearance than a typical moped style electric bike. So it should be pretty decent for off-roading. Should be, I, I don't know. But in today's video, we're gonna crack this thing open, take a closer look at it, then take it out for a full review and see what the Run Deer Attack 10 is made of. And when you crack the box open, here's what you get. Looks like we gotta put the seat on. Let's see what's in there in a moment. Attack! And check it out, the wheels match the color of the frame. This military looking color. Of course, knobby tread for off-roading. 20 inches tall, four inches wide. Brick rotors are 160 millimeter. Let's take a look at the seat. It's got a cool look to it. Run Deer, a little bit squishy. We'll pop that on up here in just a few. And it is full suspension with a coil rear shock. Coil shocks usually feel a little more planted than an air shock. And that connects the rear swing arm where we have a 750 watt Bafang rear hub motor. Looks like we'll have single piston hydraulic brakes. What else we're working with here? Yo, that's definitely military looking. America. Battery is sealed away inside the magnesium alloy frame. I see the charge port down here. We'll pop it out in a moment. Of course, there is front suspension as well. It is a dual crown fork, which is particularly good for off-road riding. And dude, look at the headlight. This thing really does have the whole military vibe going on. Run deer, attract wealth. Interesting. Suspension has a simple preload on the left as well as the right. Let's get these handlebars on. Ergonomic hand grips match the color of the bike. That's pretty unique. We get DY Island hydraulic brake levers. There's a bell. Pedal assist adjustments here. We'll get that display turned on here in just a minute. Seven speeds on the Shimano shifter. And of course the quarter twist throttle on the right. Oh, it's got some weight to it. Battery's still in there. Front wheel bolts down. Let's check out what's in the box. Run near bicycle. User manual. Pedals. Tools. Nice. Charger. So it is a 48 volt battery. We'll pop it out of there in a moment. Here's the connector for it. It is a three amp charger. Nice. So 20 amp hour battery pack divided by three amps. It take about six hours to charge from empty to full, which you can charge this battery on the bike. Well, let's crack that open and take a look at it. Let's take a peek down under. Actually using the camera to guide me here. Drop that battery out. There is a switch down here to turn it on and off. Here's what it looks like down here. Got a little switch to turn it on and off. And let's see if we can get it out. So let's get that seat on there. They give us a light on the rear that is activated with this button. And speaking of activated, let's turn this thing on. Run deer. To my surprise, the display is actually color, which is awesome. Three calories burned already. Turn that button on. Nice. We get watts, power of the motor. So there is pedal assist mode. You can do zero, one, two, three, four, five. And ooh, it changes colors as you go along. Dyson display. Let's tab this button, see what other stuff we got going on here. Odometer, watts, trip, time. Oh, just two things there. And then obviously speed, front and center. The most important, you can probably get into the advanced settings holding down these two buttons. Sure can, user settings, all kind of stuff you can probably go through and change on here. Backlight contrast, unit setting, wheel size, speed limit. What? Oh, you need a password. <laughs> Maybe the manual has the password. Default speed is 32 though, so we'll fire that motor up in a minute. But first, let me show you what a six foot five dude looks like sitting on this bike. Seat is comfortable, it is wide. Rear suspension definitely feels like a coil shock. Digging it. Air suspension out of the dual crown fork. This thing feels like it's gonna be pretty nice. Oh yeah, got a little bit of power there. The front headlight can be turned on, pressing that plus button on the front. Rotates with steering. Oh yeah, it got a little bit of power in this thing. Let's put it on five. <laughs> So it is bicycle brake layout. Back brake is on the right. It's important to know in case you're popping wheelies inside your house. It's got a nice standover height, dude. I like it. 34 inseam, kind of like a short, compact cockpit, kind of. Here's what my pedal stroke would look like if I'm actually going to pedal this bike. I like the seat. It's actually way better than I thought it was gonna be. Sometimes e-bikes will have like a really narrow seat and uh, it's, it's not nice when it's narrow. This one is wide. Definitely like this. And it's sitting on that uh, rear coil shock, so. Sweet. So we get seven Shimano gears on the rear. Basic Shimano derailleur. And here's the chain ring we get. Uh, fairly large. Now we just need to stop by the ammunition, get some rocket launchers, stock up on ammunition. Dude, this thing looks like a straight up tank, man. It's, this thing is a vibe. Actually, let's fire up the Bafang motor. Pedal assist five, full throttle, ready, go. Throttle only is showing. 26.3 according to this, we need to get outside. I feel like this thing should be in like a whistling diesel video. So it looks like a tank, but we don't have tank tracks. We're rolling on rubber, let's blow them up. All right, dude. 
dudes, let's take the run deer attack 10 out for a ride. We'll fire up the Strava so we can check our official distance. Power this thing up, run deer. Of course, we're on a full charge. Let's roll on out. So let's go ahead and see how this tank can do climbing the 20% grade on pedal assist five. I weigh 200 pounds, throttle only. Ready, go. Let's see what kind of torque we're working with here. Uh, decent, decent. It's showing 1,000 watts of power and pulls us up the 20% grade with no pedaling assistance at all. Woo! Beautiful day here in the neighborhood. Let's throw on the polarized lenses. Can you see that screen through the polarized lenses? The answer is yes. This screen is very bright and easy to read. And trying out the pedal assist modes here, pedal assist one, it is a cadence sensor. It appears it'll bring us up to about 10 miles an hour, whether you're pedaling or throttling, either way. So we're gonna go ahead and shift up a couple gears here. Actually, we're already on gear number seven here on pedal assist one. So this bike is definitely set up, you know, for like some uh, mountain biking gearing, slower speed pedaling. Let's go ahead and try pedal assist two. Kaden sensor kicks right in and we are up to 15. We're gonna head over here, do a little bit of off-roading right away up in this hill. Throttle will hold us at uh, same speed of 15 miles an hour. Light is green. Let's crank it up to pedal assist three, see if we can make it through. And we are on 18, 19 miles an hour. And one thing I'm noticing about this bike is it kind of puts you a little bit forward on the handlebars. Not bad at all, but you know, it's kind of just more of like a mountain biking position, I guess you could say. Let's try pedal assist four now. Boom, hits us with that power showing. Uh, right around 1,000 watts, 800 watts, right up until we get to uh, 23 miles an hour. All right, all right, let's try pedal assist five, throttle only, see what this will take us up to. 26.3 according to here as we pass by YouTube. And pulling out my GPS, it shows our top speed is sitting right at about 26 miles an hour. Now I'm guessing you could get into the settings there and figure out a way, you know, to increase that top speed. The manual that came with this bike does not show how to do that, but I can see it is limiting our power down to about 800 watts or so. So, I mean, you know, it's got a higher peak output than that. But this tank of an electric bike is kind of designed to be, you know, off-road. Too bad we don't have some tracks like that on here. It'd be like a real tank, dude. Let's try this out. So I'll crank down a few gears here, go up this uh, off-road sandy kind of material here, see how we do. There are no fenders that come on this bike, so I kind of feel a little bit of stuff kicking up here and there on me. Totally fine. It's kind of the rugged vibe, man. Kind of reminds me of like a old uh, Jeep Wrangler of some sort, like a military Jeep. Hey, we've burned seven calories already, it says. Nice work. I wonder if that's actually tracking the uh, <laughs> the pedals, or I wonder how that's measured. Oh, yeah, definitely some rocks kicking up on me. <laughs> some sand in my face there from that front tire. I'm not sure if this bike comes with optional fenders or not, but there's definitely a place to attach fenders. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of sand up on the seat. So let's go ahead and give it a zero to 20 acceleration test here. I'm gonna do throttle only. 200 pounds is what I weigh, ready, go. So kicks on that power pretty quick. About a thousand watts there. 15, 19, 20. So, you know, respectably quick electric bicycle. You know, pretty typical performance really. Woo! Kind of tempted to try and go up this thing. I don't know if we should do that though. Let's get this thing out here, do a little bit of uh, light trail riding though. This, you know, bike designed to do off-roading. So whenever you're looking at a moped style electric bike, you want to do like off-roading on, you know, I'd say full suspension is very important because all of your weight sits, you know, on the, on the back, you know, on the seat. Also, this seat has a wide seat. So uh, in general, you know, I'd say this is a relatively comfortable moped style electric bike for off-roading. And then also it is a coil shock on the rear. So that it feels a little bit more planted than like an air shock. Yeah, riding out here, man, it's, it doesn't feel too bad at all, man. Like in general, I'd say the suspension on this e-bike for for the price is pretty decent and then obviously we have those four inch wide 20 inch fat tires so that also helps absorb some cushion as well but since it is a hub drive it is very quiet unlike you know say a gas powered bike we do have a bell on here i don't want to use it and then another thing this bike has going for it is the uh, battery is mounted like really low down in the frame so you know some of these electric bikes they put the battery like way up on top no fenders though don't want to be hitting oh shoot we hit the water <laughs> hopefully that didn't kick up on us too much so in general Oh man, I'd say this bike is like a vibe, dude. It's uh, it's got that tank look and appearance. I just feel like I should be, you know, bringing this uh, whistling diesels farm or something to make some sort of uh, remote controlled tank explosion video or something. Feels comfortable to be on. I I'm liking the, I'm liking the ride, man. So let's go ahead and do a little brake test here from about 20 miles an hour. Bring up the speed here real quick, and. 
<laughs> yeah, man, we're working with uh, 160 millimeter rotors. Definitely brings the bike to a stop uh, smoothly since they are hydraulic brakes. And those uh, tires, they really grip into the ground there nicely. DY Island, you know, they are budget brake levers. They don't feel the greatest in my fingers, uh, but uh, they, they get the job done. Hit it one more brake test here. Bring it up the speed. Give it a little bit of assistance here. And, oh yeah, that'll do it. Dude, I just want to know if I can get up this thing. There's no way. I don't even want to. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. Or should we? Let's see if we can do this thing. All right, let's get a little bit of a running start here. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. It is a tank. <laughs> just barely, dude. Let's roll on back down here. Grippy tires, so much easier coming down. Suspension's nice, dude. Take this thing off here just a little bit, get some pedal action in. Woo! Lost the little bit of traction on the rear, just enough to make it a little tail happy. Having a little fun out here. Man, these uh, knobby tires grip right into the side of the grass here. So in lieu of the California incline, we'll do that hill, which is probably about 85 feet as well. It's a pretty steep uh, hill up here, I'll show you. So I gotta say, man, this bike is actually better than I thought it was gonna be. I like the suspension on it. That uh, coil shock on the rear. The suspension's tuned uh, pretty soft, but I mean, it makes for like some really nice street riding and light trail riding. Also, I should point out, per usual, moped style electric bikes just aren't really excellent for like pedaling, especially taller dudes. You can probably tell I'm six foot five, so I I'm a little bit big on this bike for sure. But if I'm not pedaling it, the riding position of it is like nice and comfortable, compact, gives me like a, a good riding position. I like it. I don't feel too small on this bike unless I start pedaling it for exercise. Let's see if this tank can do a little bit of sand riding. So we're not gonna take it to the beach. <laughs> we will take it over these rocks here and uh, let's just give it an attempt here. Kind of rolling from a slow speed through the sand. Basically the same thing as riding out on the beach. Yeah, it's powering us through pretty good, dude. The sand, I would say, is probably a little bit, um, well, I don't know. Actually, I was going to say a little bit less packed than the sand by the beach, but just has a variety of terrain here. Hey, man, we got ourselves a little beach here in the neighborhood. How about this? It's actually doing pretty good going on through this <laughs> for everybody who's going to be riding this thing on the beach. Not too shabby, though. And as a tank should do, Got that ground clearance hop in the curb there. Suspension ate that bump up. Perfect hopping off that curb, man. There's the hill we're gonna do right up there. All right, after beating on this thing for about six and a half miles, 36 minutes of ride time, average speed of 11 miles an hour, we're gonna go up this hill, see how it does. I'll we'll see how it does on a, a decent little hill climb here. If it needs help from us or throttle only or what. So full throttle now. Uh, showing 10 miles an hour here, rolling up. Uh, I am not helping it at all, and this is a very steep hill. This is steeper than the California incline. I'd say this is probably somewhere between the 20% grade and the California incline, you know, probably 13% grade roughly. And we're rolling up here just fine. Uh, throttle only showing 12.7 miles an hour. And oh, it's starting to, I forget. I forgot that it gets even steeper right here. So uh, we're pulling up here. looks like we're gonna have to uh, cut the power though. And uh, well, we, we could have, well, actually coming from a stop here, we can get on the throttle here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's actually pretty decent. So, you know, pretty typical 750 watts. It's showing 1100 watts of power. So pretty typical, you know, 750 watt hub, hub drive motor performance. And if you look way, way off in the distance there, you can see the Hollywood sign way out there. Probably gotta zoom in a little bit. Beautiful day here in Southern California. Nice little view up here of the whole LA basin, Beverly Hills off in the distance. Normal route is out there by the beach. So let's just whip it around, beat on the battery a bit more, see what kind of range we get out of it. We gotta drop the battery out. I gotta show you how to get that battery out and then we'll measure the voltage, see what the actual voltage readout is percentage wise and all that. Overall, dude, I'd say this uh, tank looking, military looking electric bike is a lot of fun, man. Most notably the comfort on it, the seat, it's wide and squishy and that coil rear suspension and soft front suspension uh, makes for a pretty darn nice riding electric bike. It is a little bit on the smaller side as is most electric moped style e-bikes. And if you guys do want to grab one of these, if you buy it through the link down below this video in the description box, that would help support my reviews here on Tailhappy TV. And of course, I greatly appreciate your support, but let's head on home, see what the final range is. Yeah, dude, this thing just cuts your power after you get over uh, 27 showing 15 watts there at 29. The Wee Wee's are out! Always!
Chili's in LA. Man, we're cooking now, dude. 32.7. This bike is not supposed to go this fast, but we are. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude. All right, dude. Just rolling over 10 miles on today's route. Uh, 48 minutes of ride time, and we are showing, uh, it says 100% battery, so that can't be right. We're gonna pop that battery out, measure the voltage, see uh, where we're actually at. Now it is a 20 amp hour, 48 volt battery. Normally, typically, you know what I would say, you know, just hooning around like I'm doing, I could expect somewhere between about uh, 35 to 45 miles of range realistically as a 200 pound dude hooning on the throttle. I don't know what is up with my battery, but it doesn't seem like it wants to just come out easily. Come on. I don't know, how hard should it be to get a battery out? It came. It can be done. Maybe put some WD-40 on it. So the battery is listed as a 48 volt, 20 amp hour, 960 watt hours of energy. There's all the uh, numbers and everything on it. Let's see where the voltage is. 49.9, so pretty much 50 volts. That'd be about, what, around 60% battery remaining after that ride. Turn this thing to make sure nobody can take it out without the key. Don't worry, they can't. Easy, easy. So all around fun bike. If you guys do want to grab one, buy it through the link below this video in the description box. However, if this is not the kind of electric bicycle you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there.